Welcome to Suzanne's studio. I'm Suzanne Barnett, your host. And tonight, I have to tell my wonderful audience <laughs> what has happened. Uh, my guest tonight is Janice Barron. Now, I had Janice Barron on my show many years ago, years ago. And I found her again, and I am so thrilled, I really am, to have Janice as my guest. Janice is the founder of Sunday Friends, a nonprofit organization, since 1997. Janice, mm. that was a long introduction, but it's true. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. It's such a joy to be here, Suzanne. Thank you. And how did how did uh, Sunday Friends begin? <laughs> and you're the one that founded it. I founded it, but not on purpose. I would say accidentally. Really? Yes. Yeah. It was what 21 years ago. Um, I had three children starting high school in in a rather affluent neighborhood um, and I became concerned that they weren't seeing too much of the world outside of their own social circle at school right and I wanted to expose them to a bigger part of the world maybe a deeper part of themselves so I took them to a homeless shelter to volunteer I thought I was doing it for them didn't didn't realize that there was that so much more was going to come but we went to a homeless shelter and we discovered children who were very disaffected it took us a while to figure out what really brought them to life. And once we did, Sunday Friends, Sunday Friends just came to life. We learned that these children wanted to, they wanted to accomplish something for real. They wanted to earn something. They wanted to learn. We found that their parents really wanted a better future for them and a more quality family life. And step by step by step, Sunday Friends grew. Well, tell us about it. What do you do, really? What do we do? Yeah. We bring about 300, 350 people together on Sunday afternoons for about six hours. We meet at a local elementary school in, in very low-income neighborhoods in San Jose, San Jose Unified School District, the Franklin McKinley School District. We bring together families, parents and children together along with community volunteers and the most amazing community partners, people who um, bring in education and services. And we all come together to do two main things. First thing we come together to do is to give back to the community. And, and I'll tell you more about that because yeah. it's, that's key to Sunday Friends. We didn't want to be one of those charities that treated people like charity cases, like society's needy victims, you know? Yeah. We, we wanted to give them the opportunity to be vital contributing members of society because we feel like that's a key to breaking the cycle of poverty, changing how people see themselves in relation to society. So we gave them opportunities to give back to society, and I'll tell you more about that in a while. The other thing we do is education. We help each other learn everything from very practical life skills to academics. And throughout it all, there's another very unique part of Sunday Friends. We have families, we have volunteers all working together side by side in all of the projects, the giving projects and the learning projects. But what's unique is that the family members also are able to earn tickets through their participation and through their contributions. And these, these are like very child-friendly tickets but a lot of denominations, but they really have value. They get to save these tickets in their bank accounts where they earn interest and then withdraw them and go shopping with them in our stores. So we have stores called the treasure chests and they get to shop, the parents shop for basic necessities, diapers and laundry detergent and soap and shampoo and sometimes subs subsidies for their rent. The children shop for toys, sports equipment, bikes. Um, you know, thing, school supplies, of course, things that are meaningful to them. So, so they're, they're giving, they're learning, and they're earning all at the same time with this program. How did you, in the world, come up with that idea? <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. It's so different than other organizations. You know, everybody's so poor. It developed step by step. Yeah. It, it developed because we paid a lot of attention to what the families told us. Yeah. They told us a lot of things. They said, we don't want to feel like charity cases. We want to give, we want to earn, we need things, but yeah. we want to show our children a model for earning, not 
We don't want to teach our children how to work the system to get what they want. We want to teach them how to earn what they want. They also told us we so want a different life for our children than we had ourselves and our parents and our grandparents before us. They wanted to break the generational cycle of poverty with their children, but they knew that they had to change in some way. They had to learn things. They had to learn how to support this in order to make it possible for their children. Mm -hmm. So they said, these are, these are very caring, very smart, very hardworking, very high quality people, but they missed out on a lot of education in their background. They came to us and they said, teach us. Teach us how to help our children succeed in school. Teach us how to parent, how to handle discipline, you know. Teach us what to do when we're home with them so that they keep learning, so that they have strong futures. We listened to the parents and we paid attention to them. And step by step by step, the program grew. The other thing that happened was that amazing volunteers came, each one bringing a talent, a gift, and community partners who brought in education, um, things to teach in the classes, or one-on-one -on -one consultations, or services for our families. Um, there's so many amazing, amazing organizations and services and resources and experts in our community. They were looking for the families who were ready to learn, ready to receive, ready to make changes. And but it all came together. It all came together. <laughs> and so how many years has it been? About 21 and a half years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're still, I, I mean, I can't believe. I, I went, uh, this is really hot. When I say <laughs> hot, this is, hot. it really means it's extra special. <laughs> but I went on the web page. I went on your mm -hmm. web page. And it's so interesting because your background is amazing. Oh. Really, it is. Thank you. And I just want to know, because I love to ask kind of psychological mm -hmm. questions, what have you gotten out of it? Oh my gosh, what have I gotten out yeah. of it? <laughs> um, the first thing is, every time the phone rings, it's somebody wonderful at the other end. There are so many people in our community who have so much to give and they want a place to give it. And I talk to the best people and I work with the best people. So my heart has been so happy finding and, and playing a role in bringing together this community. It has been such a joy. Um, my children, it, it had a, a real impact on them growing up. And they talk about how it changed them. Give us an example, please. Um, Casey tells me that she used to, when she'd see a homeless person on the street, she'd maybe throw something at them and run away. She was scared. Now she knows these are people, you know? These are people. And, you know, she goes and she talks to them. Um, both of my, all three of my kids will say, um, I've learned a lot about values. I've learned that you can devote your life to gathering material things and it doesn't make you happy. And then I see people coming together and all giving to each other. And, and I see how happy they are. And I know where satisfaction comes from. Well, I'd say that's quite a yeah. wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, Janice, how do people find out about Sunday Friends? If they're volunteers, well, the, wor the word spreads. The word just spreads through the high schools, through the colleges, through the families. Um, anyone who wants to volunteer can go to our website. Just go click on www.sundayfriends.org and, and click on the volunteer tab. But it's only on Sunday. It, we do have some opportunities during the week. Um, the biggest programs with the families are on Sundays, but our treasure chest store, I was telling you about yeah. the store where people, where our family members exchange their tickets for things that they need, that runs during the week. And so we have volunteers working there during the week. And then we have some special and really fun fundraisers that happen during the week, our holiday shopping spree coming up in November, a lot of great opportunities. So how did the people get, get to it if they don't have a car? Our families get to it. You know I what? Mean, yeah. One way or another. They, they get rides with each other, they take the buses, a lot of them do have, do have cars. Um, they make it a priority to get there. Now, the fact that you're in the San Jose area, right? Right. 
Do you have many people from other areas? Our volunteers come from throughout Santa Clara County and all the surrounding counties. So they okay. come from far and wide. Our families come from all over San Jose, not just the schools where we run the programs. Yeah. All over San Jose and somewhat beyond. Yeah. Now, here's a question I'd really like to ask okay. you. Could you tell a couple of really dramatic stories? <laughs> I'm so I mean, ready. all those years. Well, you know, I told you how our families are able to earn the things they need. And the parents, the parents tell us that it's, it's made such a change in their children. Instead of their children whining and begging, they're now empowered to work harder, to earn what they need. And they've seen their children change. And one of the stories that touches my heart the most, and I have to tell you there are many instances of this story, are the children, Leticia is one of them, the children who work hard and they earn their school supplies so they're ready for school but then they don't stop there they earn they earn more tickets and they buy school supplies that they bring to their teachers to give to other children You're in the kidding. class and this happens more often than than yeah. you would than you would expect yeah and i think we've learned that if you can meet your own needs if you're empowered to meet your needs then you realize you have more to give and you care about others. And Sunday Friends is a place where people absorb that, you know. We're giving to others all the time and and there's a joy in that. And and the children children do that. You know, another example of that is our scholarship students. We have a lot of kids who've grown up through Sunday Friends and participated in our Path to College programming. Their parents have learned a lot about how to support them in college. They've received a lot of hands-on, one-on-one help and a lot of classes. And when they get to college age, um, many of them earn so scholarships through Sunday Friends. And when they write their essays, it's amazing. I'll read their essays about what they want to do, what careers they've chosen. And to my amazement, almost every one of them talks, has chosen a career where they get to give back to others. They want to help people. They want to help people who've had the same sort of difficulties their families have had, and help them rise out of poverty. That giving back touches me so much. You know something? Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't it be wonderful to mm -hmm. enlarge Sunday Friends into other areas, mm -hmm. other states, yes, <laughs> the world? Have you ever thought about that? Oh Janet? my gosh, yes. Um, what could you do about that? Well, what I can tell you is that we have a model that is replicable. We have replicated it a number of times. We've expanded it to to new schools, to new neighborhoods. We know how to do it. You can guess what um, you know. What's needed, and that's money. It it costs money to replicate and run in a new in a new location. When the money is there, Sunday Friends can replicate further. Yes. So how how can you get more money? <laughs> well, I think we do ask that question every day. Yeah. And yeah. we do everything that we can. We yeah. have amazing, amazing donors in the community. We have partners, we have funders, we have grants. But so it's we big need time. More. I would think you would feel so proud mm -hmm. how this came to you, really. It was, it was quite a collaborative effort. I, I, I need to tell you that, I mean, we've run, what is it, eight, about 820 programs, Sunday programs, plus many other kinds of programs, too, over the years. After each program, we go home and we say, what did we do today that brought out the best in people, and what didn't? And we do more of the first and less of the second. So I always say it's the families, it's the volunteers, it's the families who have developed this program. We've learned from them step by step. We didn't start, I didn't start this thinking, I know what it takes to break the cycle of poverty. I didn't come into it thinking I knew much of anything. We listened, we listened, we listened, and we have amazing, amazing people that we work with, amazing staff, amazing volunteers, and everybody's there's so much respect for our families because they're they're incredible people. So much respect and we keep learning from them. And that's how the program evolves. Have you ever reached the homeless? Yes. So our program started in homeless shelters. Our first six years we oh, ran really? in homeless shelters. We learned a lot in there. And then we moved into the school environment. And, and now we tend to work more with people who I say are on the edge of homelessness. Because of Sunday Friends, because they can earn things they need, 
many of them are able to make ends meet at the end of the month, and then they can keep their children in stable housing and stable schooling. And that means everything. When you're constantly moving your children from house to house, from school to school, oh, you can't yeah. expect them to succeed. Yeah. Now, they're able to achieve stability, a certain level of stability because of Sunday Friends. And now, because they don't have to worry all the time, the parents now have the mental bandwidth to to learn how to help their children more, to change in ways oh. that helps their children. That's just really amazing. <laughs> I can't really remember that much about it because, you know, mm -hmm. we did this so long ago. Right. But, I, I mean, it's, your story is so inspiring, of course. But then I immediately think the whole world should be aware of this. But, I mean, we have so many problems. <laughs> But even to get, I mean, even to help people, just other people, is so rewarding. I was thinking about that yeah. on the way here. Yeah. You know, we listen to the news now, and it is depressing. And a lot of people are getting depressed. And what keeps me going is seeing how many um, good, good, good people there are in our local community, how many amazing efforts there are, how many people are bringing their services, health services, um, financial literacy education, parenting education, um, technology, uh, so, so, many, so much education, so many services to the families of Sunday Friends and, and delivering them elsewhere through other nonprofits in the, in the community. There's so much good that's happening locally. Okay, let me ask you, going. how many people have you affected, do you think, in all these years? And families, I'm talking family about. Family yeah, members, families. thousands and thousands. thousands. Right, and, and f volunteers, tens of thousands. Really? Yes. Because we we'll work with, um, what is it, about you know, well over 3,000 volunteers a year. So, yes, yeah, there's been a vast. lot of volunteers. This yes. is really vast. <laughs> and anybody can go. I mean, say, I have a friend in San Mateo, a family. Mm -hmm. would, if I could get that family to Sunday Friends, would they be eligible? So you're talking about a very low income family? Or? Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So we don't make people prove to us that, that they don't need to fill out forms and give us numbers and show us paperwork to show that they're eligible for the program. We have learned that anyone who's willing to work for six hours to earn basic necessities has the economic need, and they also have the attitude. They also have chosen a working alternative to charity. That's what we call ourselves, working alternative to charity over a handout charity. We, we, learn, we learn when we do um, surveys that every one of them is very low income. But, it, but you know, I didn't it works realize, out that way. would you talk about this once again? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that these families had to earn whatever in order to be there. They don't have to earn anything. They can come and participate, but as they participate, they earn tickets, and then they're able to use those tickets to buy the things yes, that okay, they need. Okay. And so, you know, they're working for six hours every Sunday, and not just on Sundays, but at home too, because we send our families home with homework. Books to write book reports, educational games to, to, and to write game reports, um, writing assignments. They work together during the week and bring that back to Sunday Friends to earn more tickets. I see. So what we teach in Sunday Friends is now carrying on throughout the weeks. And I see. And that's very important. I think that's so, that's very yes. unusual. And the families write about it. They, they write about it. They say, we used to just all watch television all the time. Now, we're playing educational games. We're reading together we're writing together we're taking a walk and talking together you know we're talking about what my children's dreams are and what they want to be when they grow up we didn't know to do that before and now we're doing that so say a family mm -hmm. knows another family mm -hmm. and they tell them about Sunday friends yes. so that family arrives that's right what happens they are welcomed in okay and they join right on in <laughs> they go to class, they go to the activities, the projects, and yep. Like right away. Right away, and they're earning tickets and, and shopping that very first day. What if they say, we don't, wanna, we don't want to earn anything? 
Well, how would you deal well, with Well, to them? begin with, no one has ever said that. Nobody. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of, you know, the worst question I could think of. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, there are people, I know there are people who would rather find a handout charity than a working alternative to charity. They're not going to come to Sunday Friends. Okay. This is, this is a segment, a very large segment of our community, of the highest quality people. And you know what? They just, they want their children. They're so proud that their children are learning to work for what they want. Then they see their children doing better in school. They tell us that. They're more helpful at home. Their behavior is better. We have kids who have written about how they got out of gangs. And they said, Sunday friends helped me to stay straight after I got out of the gang. You know? Um, we see so many changes like that. Because they, they discover that they have value, they have something to give, they're empowered to earn what they want, they are excited about what they're learning, they're excited about what they're teaching. Oh. You've got to go on national television, <laughs> Janice. Well, if you'll go with me. I'd love to. No, but I had no idea the organization was like this. And it's so interesting psychologically, isn't it, that when people really work for something mm -hmm. and they can do it, that's empowering, right? It I is mean, empowering. And the other piece that makes it empowering is that this program is for whole families together. They're, they're, we don't work with just the children or just the parents. We are engaging the parents in working with their children because we feel that parent engagement in children's education and healthy development is key to breaking the cycle of poverty. And the parents want it. They have the best hearts. They're smart as can be. And they're so grateful for a community that supports them so that they can become partners in their children's learning and development. Are you yes. ever going to leave <laughs> the Sunday friends? I bet you, I'm, I'm assuming. Well, my heart, you will never, never will. my heart will never leave never, Sunday friends. Never. We have some amazing staff now who are developing the curriculum and running the program, and they're doing an, an incredible job. Yeah. So, um, Maybe this is not a good question, <laughs> but because of your background, I mean, you have an MS, wait a second, I wrote this yeah. down. Oh. <laughs> you have an MS in, uh, wait, this is really hot, <laughs> in computer engineering. Yes. This is, that's so different than this. Mm -hmm. And wait, one other thing I want to say, that you have done, I can't believe it, 45 years of volunteerism. Right. My At least. God. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, Janice. You're too well, perfect. we were just joking about how my yeah, feet yeah, don't reach the floor. It. That's um, it. No, there's plenty. <laughs> no, this, this program is not me. It's not me, and I'm not, I'm not you know, this is, this is an example about how so many amazing people can come together. That's there's it. So many, there's so many people. Who, everybody has a different talent. Everyone has a different gift. This is a place where everyone brings their gift, and we bring out the best. Everyone brings out the best in everyone else. That's what Sunday Friends is. It's a demonstration that this is possible. Even in times where the news upsets us so much, Yeah. Good, good people come and yeah. they bring their best and they care about others. Yeah. That's and that's really what life is about. Oh, right? I hope so. If we can care about somebody else. Yes. And if we can send love to people that we don't like. I don't want to have friends that I don't like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a totally different subject. When, <laughs> in just the last moments. Um, what do you see yourself doing in five years from now? Oh, in five years? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're supposed to live in the moment. but this I have is to tell you that Sunday Friends has evolved step by step as the families have taught us. And my life has been the same way. And I can't tell you where I'll be in five years, except that I hope that I'll still be hugging these families and, and loving them. And... You know, that we'll all be there for each other. Um, I'm spending a lot of time being a grandma right now, too, and that's one of my great pleasures. But I see you yeah. as just exuding love all over the place. Just like you. No, I'm not like you. No, no. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I hope I do that. But what else is there really? I know. But to really care about somebody. It, it can even be one person. But I'm so into that philosophy. I'm with you. As I get older, it's so important to care about one another. It really is. So Janice, will you come back sooner than the last <laughs> time? I know it's, there, you're going to probably be uh, one of the uh, political people of the United States. No. Nope. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Not political. No, but I, I can't imagine in five years it's going to be so incredible. But you're incredible right now. Oh, and I you. thank you so much for being here. I really have just adored interviewing you. Thank I you really for what have. you do and thank you for bringing so much heart to your work. Thank you. I, I love it. it. Uh -huh. And of course I want to thank our crew. Mm -hmm. What would I do without our hot crew? <laughs> I thank you so much. Plus the fact that I thank my viewers so much for watching. And you know what I always say? This is the only time I can really show my drama <laughs> okay. Oh, I love to say this. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. No, really. I